Good evening. Welcome to the Alana Inquirer podcast. It's Jeremy Warner, Derek Piper, live on our YouTube channel here at Alana Inquirer. If you're joining us tonight, hit that like button, hit subscribe. As Illinois, Derek, survives and advances. They survive when they don't play their best ball, but get some big performances from some guys we don't normally see that from. Dane Danger, 18 points, 8 rebounds, almost hit uh, season highs in both those categories tonight. Ty Rogers, a double-double uh, for Illinois. And Terrence Shannon was Terrence Shannon with 28 points. But uh, not a great night for Marcus Demas. Just seven points on three of 16 shooting. Coleman Hawkins really didn't play well at all for the first 38 minutes. But huge winning plays down the stretch there as Illinois overcomes a 10-point uh, second-half deficit to come back, beat one of the hottest teams in the country right now. They're top 15 in the country over the last, what, month, uh, according to some of the metrics. Yep. can really guard. Uh, and they burst another bubble as Ohio State. Uh, Jake Debor, what a run they made at the end of the year has put him in the conversation for Ohio State's future coach. We'll see if that happens. But Ohio State not going to make the tournament now, and Illinois potentially could be a three seed after this victory. But I got to tell you, Derek, one point, I thought uh, we were going to talk about a third straight one and done for Illinois in the Big Ten tournament. I was with you. I was already thinking about the eight-hour drive back that we were probably going to have tomorrow, and uh, I wasn't too – excited about that so uh i test wise illinois did not play all that well i think brad underwood really spoke to that after the game i don't think he's super satisfied um obviously with the fact early second half he calls a timeout and explodes on his team for lack of effort and, and just some of the the focus things even i know that he mentioned in the post game interview that justin Harmon was supposed to foul up three and they didn't do that so uh there's some things that illinois did that left some plays out there uh, missed some free throws, and then first half in particular, didn't have a whole lot rolling in addition to Terrence and outside of some moments uh, from Dane as well. But a huge credit to Dane for being able to – I mean, it's just been a constant progression here the last few weeks, and to put it together and explode like that in a, in a huge moment, be able to feed him inside, for him to be that active on the glass. thought he was pretty good defensively too, um, holding his ground against Akpara, and just there's a noticeable difference when he was out there. So that, that was huge. Uh, Coleman down the stretch after a pretty forgettable night leading up to that, uh, but does show maturity to, to go back into the game and make winning plays. I mean, he got the matchup late against Battle, who is a bucket. Like, that dude's really good, and, and he was even making some tough shots, but uh, Coleman forced him in a, into a turnover or two, got the stops they needed, and uh, yeah, you'll you'll take survive in advance mode. You'll, you knew this was going to be a gritty, tricky game because Ohio State has been playing that well, and they had momentum and whatnot, but um, you'll take survival too. And, you know, 28 from Terrence Shannon obviously helps you there too. That's right. Uh, it's weird. Free throws felt like it could cost you the game, but also the reason you won the game. Six free throws made in the final minute and a half to end the game on a 6 0 run. Because I thought when Jamison Battle made that three with 143 left, that uh, I would have made, man, I, it's not going to be their night. And they find a way. Uh, and that's encouraging, Derek, for a team that had issues closing games this year. And, and let's be honest, like, Previous teams, if Kofi and Alfonso Plummer did not have a big game, if, you know, last year Matthew Meyer did not have a great game and Terry Chan, the team wouldn't win it. So to have Marcus Damask have one of his worst offensive nights uh, of the season efficiency-wise, seven points, three of 16 shooting, and to find a way to win is huge. And how could you not be so happy for Dane Danger? This guy was on the fringe of the rotation uh, in January, playing five minutes a game during Big Ten play. And tonight, the game before at Iowa, he's making huge impacts on winning for this team, and he's forcing Brad Underwood to play him. As Michael Tuop said on the podcast, it's a lot of the defense. He's one of the best defensive players they have right now in the post, um, just playing strong there, rebounding, the intensity is there, and then he's going to get his points when he's on the court long enough and just some tough finishes around Akpara, who's a really good defender, really good shot blocker. Um, how could you not be happy for a guy that's kind of gutted through Derek and his teammates and coach are today are just raving about how he's such a great guy, has worked hard, continued to work hard, despite, you know, having the kind of season that's probably worth pouting over. No doubt. Yeah, you got to love stories like that. Uh, the ability to stick with it shows that he cares about the team, not only just about his own playing time and, and being able to to get get numbers and get minutes. I mean, he said today that uh, after the game that he wants to do whatever he can to, to help this team win a national title. So, uh of course, there's a lot of steps before that, but for Illinois to really put all the pieces together when you have a backup big man that's playing that well that you can go to when Coleman's struggling or in foul trouble that you can play with Coleman at times, it, it's giving Illinois a real shot in the arm. You don't win this game without him. So 
Um, it, it's been exciting to see him play up to his potential because we know the potential's definitely been there. I mean, he's he's offensively talented. He's he's hard to to move off his spot when he wants to go into you. I thought he was at times. We know that he is skilled and can can make those spin moves and whatnot. And at times he gets himself in trouble, but. Uh, he's, he talked about it in the locker room afterwards, just understanding the Ohio State game in Columbus. Maybe he's a little too finesse. Tonight he kind of just put power into Akpara a few times and had a, a couple of those on and ones just going through him and scoring through him. So, uh, and then he, after one of them, he gave Akpara a mean look, man. Like he's like, I, I don't know, just the swagger and the confidence coming out of Dane, yeah. which is really cool. So, um, this is all about, we, we talk about it team wise, individual wise. You want to play your best basketball at this time of year. Dane Dane just doing that. And real quick, before I throw it back to you, it, it kind of gave me a little bit. And this I tweeted about this. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of easy parallel, but I couldn't help but think Big Ten tournament, Ohio State, big moment. Georgia Bashan has really had like a little takeover mode. Um, not, not little, but in 2021 when Kofi was in foul trouble and Coleman struggling tonight, it felt like Dane kind of had shades of Georgie in terms of an impact off the bench. And that's what you need, Derek, to like win in these tournaments. Uh, we, we think about it throughout the season, but you have an off game, you lose, and you don't go home. You play another game. Like, Georgie having that game, we all remember that. Like, that that's one of his, like, lasting legacy moments. So, if you do have Damascus have that game, you have somebody like Dane just step up. Or if Terrence has an off night and Quincy Garrier has a big performance. Didn't tonight. There's something like that's going to be important uh, to, to survive and advance in the NCAA tournament. Ty Rogers, one of those guys tonight, too. 12 points, 10 rebounds, just a beast on the glass. Uh, Illinois, what they end up with? 19 offensive rebounds? 19 offensive rebounds. I had 17 second chance points. Uh, so Ty continues to play hard. He looks confident offensively. Derek, he's given them somebody who can create a little bit when Marcus can't do it or Terrence can't do it. So at least he's doing that complimentary right now. Uh, but I, I just want to focus on Coleman Hawkins. He he looked out of it. Like, like one of those games where Coleman's just focus is elsewhere and just not locked in. Like at one moment, Brad Underwood looked at him and get, said, get your mind right with an expletive in, in the mix of that. But those final two minutes, man, that was inspiring stuff. Final two minutes, he made two free throws to give you the lead. He had two offensive rebounds on that final possession to help Terrence get fouled, to get a three-point lead. Uh, drew a charge, right, uh, to get a turnover out of Ohio State. Right, had a yep. defensive rebound and had two blocks. Tom, like Brad Owens said in, in the locker room, he was the best player on the court final two minutes. And that's completely true. Uh, so for him to bounce back, which sometimes that might not happen for Coleman Hawkins, I thought that was huge. And I think uh, the bench sent him a little bit of a message there in the second half. No doubt. Yeah, and, and you are able to do that and survive that with Dane. And it does allow you to put Coleman on the bench, send that message a little bit. Also, if he's not playing well, to still get production. And uh, But it was – a senior closing like a senior should with his senior with his season on the line and, and understanding that you got to make plays in winning time. And so many of these basketball games in the middle of the March and on come down to just a few possessions. It's almost like you could fast forward to the eight minute mark or, you know, approaching the, the last five minutes and it's a within it's a five point game or somewhere thereabouts. And it's about who makes those plays late Coleman to be matched up on Jamison battle. Who's having a really good, Really good night, makes some tough shots to be able to, to get those crunch time stops and uh, that offensive rebound uh, later, uh, which, which extended a possession. I think Illinois maybe ended up getting fouled on that. It was just, it was good to see. It was a maturity about him. Now Coleman has to understand. I'm sure Brad will send the message that we can't have you checked out for 30 minutes in a winner go home mode, especially in the next tournament you're about to go to. So uh, that needs to be addressed. That needs to be fixed uh, because with, Marcus struggling with Coleman kind of lackluster, very lackluster. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to, to get in the winning position. So Quincy Gary, zero points in 20 minutes, four rebounds in 20 minutes. Like you had three seniors not play well most of this game, and you yeah. still won. I guess yeah. a, t a team that looked tournament caliber. Like they, this was one of the better teams in the country over the last month, and you still found a way to win. And again, we, we gave credit. We got to give credit to Taryn Shannon here, too. Another 28 points, eight of 20 shooting. But just dominant in the final 10 minutes, Derek. 14 points in the final 10 minutes, 9 of 10 from the free throw line in the final 10 minutes. Um, I thought he was really good defensively. I know Bruce Thornton got some of his, but I, I, there was just – that guy wanted to win tonight. Like, there was no doubt about that. He had a look in his eye that I thought was was great. And 
that Euro step was one of the best Euro steps I've ever seen. <laughs> in transition to get an and one and get his team kind of back into it, hit a big three to kind of give some energy uh, here. So um, just wanted to shout out Terrence Shane. He, he's been so damn good. And uh, tonight was was no different. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, on the note of the Euro step, because he can gather and he's so slick with it, it's hard to square him up. Now, I did think that Bruce Thornton maybe squared him up once on a, a call that was a block and maybe should have been a charge. But outside of that, it's it's so difficult when you know that the block charge rule and they want to lean towards not giving the, the defender that, that, that call that Terrence is just – it's so automatic of being able to finish through guys and beat guys to a spot and, and slide this way when you see he, he's a, a defender walling up on him. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he was aggressive and, and Illinois needed it. Uh, all of that in the first half. I mean, I, I can't remember off the top, but I think it was like six for 13 from the first in the first half. And the rest of the team was like six for 19, missing yeah. free throws. And he really, really led you and carried you. Uh, outside of then, obviously, Dane, who, who got it going. But that's what you want your star player, your alpha dog to look like. And then to get to the free throw line late and make those shots is key. So um, I liked it Illinois early, just kind of a, a nitty-gritty, you know, into the, into the X and O's. I know that Brad talks about maybe not running a ton through Terrence. I thought early on they ran him off a lot of the stagger screens, get him coming to the top of the key with his left hand, and uh, he's able to make plays downhill off of that. And I, I liked seeing that because it was tough for – with Ohio State's size, this was a tough matchup for Marcus and Booty Ball. Like, yeah. get him on Mahay Fee, Battle, uh, Thornton. Like, he's not going to have a lot of those. Oh, he's got a, a real size mismatch or athleticism right. mismatch, those type of things. So, um, Ohio State kind of took that away, but Terrence did enough. And then obviously, Dane to, to make it a, a winning formula. All right, we'll get some of your uh, super chats. Thanks to Duke for the 199 silver chat. We appreciate you guys. We'll get some of your questions here coming up. Um, and we will talk about is Illinois in a three seed and what do we think of the potential matchup tomorrow is right now. Uh, we're in the middle of the first half. Nebraska's up 29 uh, to 21 over Indiana. So it's going to be an interesting one to see what they get tomorrow. I think tonight might have been the tougher matchup based on how Ohio State is playing, but we know Nebraska has been really good all year. Uh, but before we get to that, let's hear from one of our great sponsors. Eat better, especially when I'm out on the road like I am so much in March. But eating better has never been easier with Factors Delicious Ready-to-Eat Meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart and Keto, but my favorite is the Protein Plus. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. The great part about Factor, these are two-minute meals. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals. They're ready to heat and eat wherever you go. So whether it's pancakes, smoothies, more, you can discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. And you can be flexible with your schedule with these meals. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule deliveries at any time. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. So you can sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So head to factormeals.com slash Illini50 and use code Illini50 to get 50% off. That's code Illini50 at factormeals.com slash Illini50 to get 50% off. So to the Illini Choir podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Man. That sounds like a gift, doesn't it? Uh, I'd go for a walk, maybe. Maybe read. Like an actual book, not tweets and sports articles. That's what I thought maybe I would do. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is know what's important to you and to make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. 
Visit BetterHelp.com slash Illini today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Illini. All right, Derek, uh, so we get to stay in Minneapolis for a little while longer, uh, and we'll see if they can get to Sunday. I got to be honest, like I felt if they got through tonight's game that they would get to Sunday. But we know Nebraska gave Illinois – uh, a nice run, a nice comeback, and gave him a scare in Champaign. Indiana, Terrence Shannon was not quite Terrence Shannon quite yet uh, in that game, 70-62, uh, to 62, but their defense and their front court obviously are very good. Khalil Ware was not in that game uh, against Illinois. So this is only going to last for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes or another hour. Um, so it's going to age pretty poorly for people who tune in tomorrow when they listen to this. But what do you think of either of those matchups? Would you prefer one to the other? It's a good question on preference. I know for the WCIA preview show, I picked Indiana to win the game. I didn't know that Trey Galloway was going to be out. He's missed the last two games, and it's a big absence for them. Uh, of course, we talk a lot about with Indiana, uh, how thin they are in the backcourt, and he's really, you know, Xavier Johnson has been injured and has not played all that well. So Galloway's kind of been the once consistent presence that you like. Um, so without him, it could be tough for them to pull this thing off. I think that. In terms of the matchup, I mean, Khalil Ware is playing outstanding as well as outside of Zach Eady, maybe as well as any big man uh, in the Big Ten. And uh, he'll be a problem. He's a guy that around the basket can really can score it and alter shots. Uh, and you've got to have a really good Coleman Hawkins in that game. Dane Danger would be up for a, a tall task. And we know that Renew with his back to the basket can also score. So they got that high low kind of mix, the ability to, to pound it inside and uh, also. I thought even without wear and champagne, it, it was kind of notable that Indiana's size was also something defensively yeah. when they play bigger lineups, they play in Baco, that it can be harder to, to score around the basket and, and all harder for, again, Marks to play booty ball. So defensively, they can compose a threat. Uh, on that note, Nebraska has been one of the top defenses in the country since the start of February. The metrics have been really, really good. And uh, I think they do a great job of, of kind of just condensing inside the the pain and then recovering. And uh, then we know offensively your guy, uh, Casey Tominaga, Rick Mask, and be that stretch five man, and also someone that scored it pretty well um, back to the basket in Champaign. And Bryce Williams is a, a big guy that can go create his own shot off the dribble too. So two good, yeah. uh, two solid teams. Um, Nebraska is obviously probably better than that. They're, they're the three seed for a reason. And, um, I would probably prefer to play Indiana, especially if Galloway is out. But um, as it looks right now, maybe it will be the Huskers. Yeah, the the Huskers, I I think, are just the more well-rounded team, right? Um, You mentioned how good they've been defensively. Since February 1st, they're number two in the country in defensive efficiency. The team you played tonight, Ohio State's now number 19 after you scored 77 on them. So um, I I feel like Illinois can score on you, but they can also score on you because their offense – can go nuclear at times when, when case is that good uh they got options that can spread the court out you know they got alex the only one that can't shoot um and they kind of do this nba kind of offense somewhere to illinois and that they don't really have a true point guard usually on the court so uh, i know illinois has a lot of respect for what fred hoiberg does and, and nebraska does so uh it's a tough matchup but if i'm Illinois, i'd rather play nebraska because Derek, this whole you want to win this tournament but you also want to get to a three seed and right now i know our boy brad evans as Illinois, as a, as a number three seed, the third number three seed, because Duke has stumbled, Kentucky stumbled today, Kansas has stumbled. So you left this door wide open. That's why it would just had felt so terrible if Illinois didn't win tonight. But I still think they got work to do. If they lose, I think they open up the possibility, Derek, that they can be a four seed again. But if they beat a quad one opponent and get to play probably Purdue on Sunday – I think they're probably going to be a, a number three seed. So uh, I think tonight is or tomorrow night, it's going to be basically win and and you get that three seed because all these other teams are just kind of fumbling the opportunities. And if Illinois is able to make the most of it um, and, and improve their resume with another quad one, I think they get it. Yeah, that's a great point. And it would give you that sixth quad one win if you were able to beat Nebraska tomorrow. And, and that is, can be, I mean, that can be a, a differentiator as you look at the different resumes and, one argument I'd have if you were kind of maybe on the, the Kentucky side or even Kansas, I know that Kansas is pretty widely thought of having lost four or five and, and be the situation they are that to slide pretty solidly to the four line. Uh, Kentucky will be interesting just kind of how the committee views you know, this loss to Texas A&M. Of course, they have the high point of beating Tennessee, but 
Um, if you're comparing their resume in Illinois, like I think they've, I think they've got four wins against the top 10 in the net. So the, yeah. the high points of their resume on the win side is, is a lot better than what Illinois has working for them. So that's kind of yeah, where you just, can really use. Yeah. Just to compare it, Illinois, 24 and eight, Kentucky, 23 and nine. Uh, strength to schedule: Kentucky sixty, Illinois forty-one. Quad one: Illinois six and six, Kentucky six and five. But as you said, Kentucky's got marquee wins. Illinois does not have those quad one A type wins. Right. Yeah. So th- that's something that it will be interesting. We don't know. We won't know until Selection Sunday exactly how the committee decided on those things. But uh, it it has been a situation where those teams in your range and honestly in front of you, as you looked at the the top end of the four line and then into the three losing, like losing early in these tournaments, Kansas to do it, Duke, Kentucky, um, Creighton uh, is another one that lost last night. I don't, I don't think Creighton's going to fall below you because yeah, uh, they have, they have some quality on their resume, of course, with UConn too, but um, that's what Illinois needed. And it, it almost looked really frustrating where Illinois, that, that could have been, I don't want to say it was the storyline of the season, but it almost had moments where it's like, Okay, take the next step. Like you're, this is a good team, good to good to really good team. Take the next step, whether it's beating a, a top tier opponent, or here's the three, here's the three line, go get it, or at home against Purdue, here's to keep the Big Ten title race alive, go get it. And if they would have fumbled the bag, so to speak, you would have been pretty frustrated. But you, you got it done, and um, I think another win and getting to Sunday would make me feel really good about the three line. Um, as of right now, though, yeah, our, our boy Brad does a great job, and and maybe you are sitting there as of as of tonight. Yeah, just just for balance, Lenardi still has them as a four seed behind Duke. You look yep. at the resume; Duke is twenty four and eight, five and four against quad one, sixty eight in strength to schedule. Illinois is forty one. Now Illinois strength to schedule will go up, going up against the top forty Ken Palm team probably in Nebraska yeah. if they're yeah. able to close this one out. Uh, if they play Indiana, obviously not, but. Um, Derek, I know you looked into Duke's resume a little bit more than me, but it's probably going to come down to those two. Um, right. I, I don't know if Illinois will be in front of Kentucky, but probably come down to Illinois and Duke. Yeah, and they are similar resumes because, as I mentioned before, they're kind of both in shower, shallower leagues. ACC, top-heavy, not a lot of depth in terms of tournament teams. Big Ten, of course, noticeably down this year. They both have, that being Illinois and Duke, both have two wins against the top 25 in the net. That's similar. Uh, one difference is Duke's best win. It looks a little better by beating Baylor on a neutral or Illinois, uh, I think, is whether you want to say it's at Wisconsin or at home against Michigan State. Um, either of those kind of in that the 20 to 25 range. Um, so I think that the Nebraska win wouldn't be like trumping the Baylor, but it would give you three. It would give you another quad one win to kind of compare to. And then, of course, I, I think if you beat Purdue, I know it, it always comes back to the conversation where it's like, does, does that game really matter? It, it should. It needs to matter. It, it should. It needs yeah. to matter. Um, <laughs> well, but, can, uh, can I can I, can make a big comment about why we're making a big deal out of this, right? The difference between a three and four. And I know it's self-explanatory for most people, but the path just becomes easier. You play a potential six seed, which right now looks like Nevada, Utah State, those kind of programs. And those are good basketball teams, but you're not talking about potentially – South Carolina or Auburn is, is a five seed, or I, I don't think Kansas would fall there, but somebody like that, right? Like you're talking about an easier second round game if you get there. And then you're also talking about location here, Derek. You and I have been prepared to go to Spokane because everyone has Illinois as a four seed going to Spokane. Right now, Jerry Palm has Illinois as a three seed going to Omaha, playing Moorhead State in the first round and Nevada in the second round potentially. And then no one seed in the Sweet 16 if you get there. Correct. Like, I, I, I forgot what the stat was. I'll have to look it up here in a moment, Derek. But Illinois hasn't been on the bottom of a bracket. They've always been in that one, four, five, eight, nine. Like, it, they, whenever they make the tournament, they always seem to be in that kind of um, – they haven't been in the bottom of the bracket, feels like, in a really long time. So, I'll have to look at that. I think 20 – was it 2013? 2013, they were? yeah. Yeah. But it's not often that, that they get there. Um, it always seems like they're that one, four, five, eight, nine. That's just a tough path when you got to go through a, a one seat. So I think it would be huge uh, if they're able to do that. We talk about setting ourselves up. I know some people don't like when I say an X factor is the draw. Well, if you create a better draw, yeah, it, there's there's more chances of advancing. It's a big part of it. Of course, you got to play well when you get to that win or go home mode. But setting the path is really important and a big part of you know why Illinois last year. I know that they were 
the writing was on the wall for that team. They weren't going to go anywhere uh, substantial because they just weren't playing well enough. But um, if you can give yourself a chance just based on the draw, I, again, like I think even when you look at the four line, that's a potential draw with like McNeese State. Like I'm not going to try to make them sound like they're world beaters, but they're a pretty good team. Just the farther you can go up, the, the more favorable really your first weekend should be, both with the first round and the second round draw. And then – not saying you gotta if you want to go where you ultimately want to go, which is final four, then you're gonna probably gonna run into a one seat at some point. So you like you're just gonna try to completely duck those guys, but trying to trying to line it up best draws possible. Um, locations are a really good point, especially trying to get fans there, not having some crazy travel, um, giving us a little bit of a break so we don't have to go all the way to Spokane and whatnot. But um, yeah, it all matters and it goes hand in hand with I think just Illinois getting momentum late in the year. You know, they've won now, what is it, five of six, and you get to Sunday, you're feeling pretty good, not only about positioning, but just how you're playing uh, going into the real defining part of your of your season. All right, so uh, KC is going off. It's, uh, Scott tells in our 15 points, three of five from three. He's really freaking good. And Nebraska is now up 47 to 27. So Illinois will be wow. playing Nebraska uh, wow. tomorrow. It's just I, Indiana can't score with them. Uh, so I, I don't see that happening. 47 in the first half? 47 to 27. Yeah. Jeez. 47 with a minute left. In the first, I guess Indiana. Not a bad defensive team. So. Yeah. Indiana can't uh, catch up with them. So here we go. Illinois against Nebraska. Big opportunity uh, for the Illini uh, tomorrow night. Let's get to a few of these before we go. Fly on that fly. Justin Harmon, what's wrong with him? Quincy and some of the others have good games here and there. Harmon has been a total no-show since the Maryland game. He had, he had a couple of double-digit games uh, in there. He's got to get right. He's an X-factor, right? Like You could use a little bit more production from him. Brad Underwood does play him late because he makes free throws. And Justin does make free throws really well. Uh, but, yeah, some of the turnovers, and he just wasn't very – a lot of guys weren't aggressive shooting the ball tonight. Brad was really yeah. upset they didn't shoot more threes. They only shot 15 threes tonight. Uh, guys passing up open shots outside of Terrence, it felt like, from three. So, uh, yeah, Justin Harmon, he's another one of those guys, Derek, who can help you win a NCAA tournament game. Like, if he gets double digits, Illinois is usually winning. Just wish there was more middle ground for him. Even when it's not yeah. the high points that you could just get a solid night. Six and, points. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that that's where you, you're really frustrated right now, I think, because when he's not right, it's it's pretty bad. And uh, he took – I think the confidence maybe just slipped a little bit. Like the, the mid-range jumper he took that like hit the other side of the backboard, and that was one, one of those awful possessions where battle was out with foul trouble. And I kind of let that thing slip in terms of the opportunity to put themselves in a real great position. And then just even for Brad to say that, you know, Harmon was supposed to foul up three and he didn't. Like Those are just mental things that can't happen. I mean, this is a guy that's played a lot of basketball. I know it hasn't been at the high major level. I know it, the stakes probably haven't been as high as they are right now for him, but uh, they need to. They need more out of him. So they need his engagement. Of course, he wasn't the only one who wasn't having extra bite or extra focus or extra urgency because that was lacking out of Illinois for the most part other than Terrence and – and maybe Dane. I think Ty played well and, and played hard, but uh, there were there are a number of other guys they needed more from. But I, I agree with the point. Like Harmon, over the last few weeks, really just hasn't hasn't been giving you a lot. Not to say that he won't down the stretch because you know later, kind of in crunch time moments, he has shown up at times. But they need more. They need more consistency, yeah. and, and they it's running out of time to to, to kind of find that. KSA just buried another three going into the half, 50 to 27. Nebraska, Bryce Williams, four or five from three. So, Illinois, Nebraska on Saturday. Quick turnaround, Derek, 230 tip off uh, for the Illini on CBS. They get to be on the CBS broadcast. First Big Ten win since they won the Big Ten championship game against Ohio State uh, a couple years ago. Uh, two one and duns, close to being one tonight, but now nice bounce back uh, for the Illini. Anything we want to get to, Derek, before we get out of here? Uh, I think that one stat I would say, if you do make it to Sunday, of course they got another win to to get, but I would put them in sole possession second all time in the Big Ten tournament, eight title game appearances. If they get there, I'm not saying it's a foregone conclusion. If Jeremy's boy is shooting the rock like this, you just never know. It could be a an exit uh, against the Huskers, but um, also maybe let's uh, let's turn this into the the honorary wine game. Can we get a 
a bottle of wine to put like at center court for Hoiberg and, and Underwood, and the winner gets to, to chug it That's afterwards. Right. But uh, these guys are our friends. Of course, Hoiberg coming to Brad's Coaches versus Cancer event. Uh, was it last year or, or two years ago? Yep. But um, it'll be a fun one tomorrow, no doubt. And uh, just the, the chance to stick around and be playing into Saturday is uh, – it's a welcome kind of change after, yeah, one and done here recently. There was one Illinois player that wanted the crowd to be a little bit louder at one point in this game, and uh, he was upset that they weren't. Wasn't a great <laughs> attendance tonight uh, no. for, for the entire thing, but we're an outpost. Like That's what Minneapolis is, but I will say Nebraska fans are probably going to show up because it's not too yeah. far away from Nebraska. It's like the second closest uh, outside of Iowa for, for Nebraska fans, and they travel, so I'm really interested to see. Uh, if Illinois fans uh, can compete with that, but uh, Illinois fan, Illinois players are going to have to deal with that. Like Nebraska's hot, man. They're they are excited about this team. I think this means winning a Big Ten championship would mean so much to them. The first one for for this program uh, would be huge. So uh, I think you're going to get a really motivated team. But I love that, and you got a sniper in Casey Tomonaga that can go lead Nebraska to great things in the NCAA tournament and carry you for a couple games. I love this challenge uh, for Illinois heading into the NCAA tournament. There's nothing wrong with getting pushed uh, by a team that sitting on that that nine line maybe has a chance to move up uh, a little bit farther and uh, they'll be a tough out for somebody i know that for sure especially if they continue to defend and then have the ability to shoot three like this so uh that is a good point on the the home court advantage i know that we were kind of discussing it coming up who would have the most fans i did think that uh of course you knew minnesota would, would turn out for their game i uh, didn't know that iowa. Have a, iowa for sure didn't know that wisconsin a long stay, yeah, Wisconsin. But uh, I felt like Nebraska just, you know, they, they support the heck out of their programs, and when they have something to root for, which they do this year, um, mm-hmm. that's that's something that I knew that they would turn out for. So, uh, in general, I mean, we could spend time talking about Minneapolis, and um, I I like the venue, I like the the surrounding area, I like this the city. I just great I host not, city. It's just too far away. Yes, yeah, that's the bottom line, isn't it? So. Yeah, and it's just – I'm just mean for all the fan bases. Like, that's what it's about. Like, Indianapolis, yeah. there's so many people there because it's so close for a lot of fan bases. Now, it's not close for Minnesota. It's not close for Nebraska. It's certainly not going to be close for Maryland or Rutgers anywhere, basically, uh, and the same for the West Coast schools. But uh, I think it's a great host city. I, I like this a little bit more in Chicago, to be honest with you, because it's a great host. You can walk everywhere. You see fans walking everywhere. I feel like they're embracing it. It's, it's the biggest thing happening here. That's not going to happen in Chicago. But Indianapolis is just – incomparable when it comes to, to hosting in my opinion 100 agree yeah indy indy's got everything you want it's got the proximity to a lot of different fan bases it's got the the just not as much congestion as chicago easier to get around you got the bars and restaurants all around for uh fans to just mingle and, and conglomerate and just have fun and uh, i'd say that they're not doing it here just not as much volume not as much traffic uh here with the fans but uh tomorrow should be should be good. You got some good battles. Wisconsin's playing well. I, sh- I shouldn't mm-hmm. mention that. They've really turned things around. Purdue uh, survives a scare both for in the game in Michigan State and Braden Smith going down but comes back. So uh, it's getting down to the Final Four. I'm, I'm glad we're still going to be s- still here for it. Yeah, we can stay for the weekend. We appreciate all you guys for tuning in live on our YouTube channel. Hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notifications bell. We appreciate you guys more than you know. It's fun doing these after games. Uh, we got a lot of writing to do. The show will be plenty of content. And Alana Inquire, Joey caught up with Coleman Hawkins about the final two minutes. And uh, as always, Coleman says stuff. So I'm really excited to see what Joey puts together there. I'll write on Dane Danger. Derek will have three takeaways from this game. We'll also have three keys for tomorrow against Nebraska. So uh, let's get to the bar. Let's get some a bite to eat, a, a few beers while we write, Derek. How about it? Ready, break. Joey, Joey's fist bumping <laughs> in the background. For <laughs> let's get after it. All right, everybody have a great night. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you next time on the Online Inquirer podcast.